Aloha. This is Bear Wozniak coming to you from Waikiki Beach. We have a really cool guest on our show today. His name is Kennedy Hall. He's a journalist with LifeSite News, which we, we all love. And he's written a new book, which we're going to dig into. It's called The Terror of Demons, which is what each of us men is supposed to be, uh, emulating uh, our wonderful St. Joseph. So when we get back, we're going to dig into uh, reclaiming uh, the ground that men have lost in the in the last, uh, I, th- I would say, since the time of Humanae Vitae, since the pill and all of that sort of s- stuff began to marginalize men. So we're going to have a real deep and frank uh, conversation when we get back. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I just got back from Erie, Pennsylvania. They, uh, Father Larry Richards out there and his men invited me to come speak to their, to their event. And all the whole time they're saying, hey, we're going to take you ice fishing. I don't know when, uh, you know, when this show is going to air, but I'm sure it'll still be probably in the winter. And I said, I don't even know what you do with ice once you catch it. But um, I, my goal, I told him my goal was to spend no more than 60 seconds outside during the whole time I was there. And uh, Chet, who picked me up, within the first, uh, picking me up and getting my luggage in the tar- car took at least 45 seconds. So it was already pretty brutal for me. But it was really cool because when you go there, you just feel like you're among real men. You know, there was a there's a determination there. There's a toughness there. There's a grittiness there. And um, and so uh, it, being there, I was I was there to speak to them. But I left, I would say, you know, it's right there on the lake and there have all those sailing uh, the sloops and, and uh, the modern sailing ships as well as the square rigger, a square rigger that's there. And I would say that I left, left with wind in my sails with more of a clarity about how God wants to, me to order my life and also even more of a determination. So, uh, so, so thankful for the men of Erie, Pennsylvania. I want to do a special shout out to young John Bryan's son. He's about, I would say, about a 13 or 14 year old young man who helped me so much uh, during the event. So, special shout out to him and all the young men there that are showing a real devotion and dedication to the Lord. So, uh, we have Kennedy Hall with us here. His book is Terror of Demons Reclaiming Traditional Catholic Masculinity. Um, and it, it's just so necessary. I love this. Men, men have not, um, men, well, you know, Kennedy, men talk like they're victims. Oh, the women have relegated us, or the or the or the culture um, uh, emasculates us. Um, um, they do this and they do that, and we're just kind of relegated to 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 this uh, to be less than what God's calling us to be. And I just call it out and say, man, that sounds like a victim talking to me. If we lost ground, it's because we let someone take it, and uh, we're 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 realizing now how far we've lo- how much ground we've lost, and what we need to do to to reestablish ourselves. What was the? T- but before we talk about the book, I want to hear talk story about your own your own uh, journey. First of all, guys, he looks uh, he looks like he's in great shape. Um, and uh, I guess you're a weightlifter and that sort of thing. But can you tell us, well, what, what about that? Are, are, I know in your book you talk about how you get up every morning at 4.20 and uh, you hit the gym before 5 o'clock for an hour or so of training. Yeah, yeah. Um, something, some things have changed since I wrote the book. When I, when I wrote it, I lived at a different house and I only had a shed. So I've gone soft now and I go in my basement. Uh, it's not heated, though, I promise. It's still not um, heated. So it's, it's not as... Uh, it's, it's supposed to say temperature of a cold cellar. I've upgraded my gym. I got more of a what now, kind of a cellar? Like a cold cellar where you store your canned goods. You know, cold. Do you have one of those cold cellar. Yeah. No, we yeah. don't have that here. We keep all of our food in the ocean. We go get it from there. Okay, it's like uh, <laughs> it's like an old ice box. Just to dig all out. Right. Like, anyway, it keeps things cool. Um, so that's where my gym is. But uh, yeah, I love weightlifting. I when I was fourteen, actually, my grade nine year in high school football. Um, I was a starter the whole season, and then we changed. We have uh, Canadian football, so it's 12 v. 12 instead of 11, so it's a different setup. And you setup. play it on the frozen tundra. Yeah. I think we did a uh, 
a 53. Anyway, we changed it. I was the defensive end. No, I was the defensive end. Sorry, when we did a 53. Then we went to a uh, we went to a uh, 54. Anyway, they changed it. So I was on the bench for the finals. I started oh. the whole year, oh. and they they picked one of the offensive players that was in grade 10, better athlete, to go both ways for this big game. And uh, we ended up crushing them like 45 to seven or something like that. So I played the whole second half. I got a lot of playing time. That's fine. But I was heartbroken. You know, I was, mm. I just, I went the whole year and then I sat on the bench for the last. So I, I resolved that I would, uh, I think I had, you know, delusions of grandeur about playing Division One and stuff. But at least I said, uh, I'm going to weightlift. So we played on the Saturday. I was in the gym on the Monday. And uh, weightlifting That's has cool. been an obsession ever since. And yeah. uh, it's it's I don't know what I'd do without it, honestly. Yeah, I, I don't know what I, what it is about it. You know, I've I've, I've trained uh, here on the at the base of Diamond Head here with a woman. Her name is Lynn. She's passed away now, but I, she was a tough personal trainer. And all we did was deadlifts and uh, bench presses uh, with her. The, all the yeah. curls for the girls and all those other things we did by ourselves. But she would yell at us and she would make sure that our lats were engaged and our spine was in the right direction, our knees weren't yeah. over our toes. But do you, describe that feeling when you're doing a deadlift yeah. and it doesn't move for a while. <laughs> it's very humbling. Uh, but, 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 but you know what I'm saying? When, it, when it, it doesn't move for three or four or five seconds and all of a sudden it starts to move. It is, it, yeah. It's it's like that, uh, you know. John Madden. He used to have. Did he die? Is he is he passed? Yeah, John Madden? yeah. He just yeah. Passed rest away. his soul. Yeah, I love him. I used to I'm play. A um, fan. <laughs> yeah, I used to play uh, Madden two thousand or something like that yeah. on old PlayStation one. Like I played it when it was a when it was a board game. Okay. I yeah. Didn't know that. Way back in the, way back like in the seventies or something. Way 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 wow. way back. Yeah. I had no idea. I had Madden for my PlayStation. I never was a big video game guy. I kind of stopped. Me in, neither. In yeah. High school, but Good for but. You. Um, the uh, there was a like there was these phrases that were repeated over and over again, right? And if you played the game for yeah. hours, you hear the same thing. And yeah. it was that's what it was. That's what happens when an unstoppable object meets an immovable force. Right. And that's what one that's of those things. Mad, and be, madness, yeah. And uh, that's what it's like when you're just you're squeezing and your eyeballs are going to bulge, bulge out of your skull and it won't move, and then it finally does. And that's a pretty fun moment. Isn't that interesting? How you're you're, you're doing a a bench press or a deadlift, and it's. You're doing everything right, and it's not moving. And you would think you would think that the longer it takes to move it, the more your strength would be dissipating. But somehow, in some microscopic way, things are happening, and there, there's a, a, the, iner and the inertia of that bar is beginning to move, and then it and then mm -hmm. it moves, and you do that deadlift, and it just it's just people. You know, I'll say, you know, it's almost like to me, it's like dropping in on a big wave at YMA. It's an incredible feeling. It's like people hitting the perfect golf swing when you hit when That's you feel right. that contact with the ball. Um, yeah. Have you ever had, uh, uh, shall we say, an embarrassing moment uh, weightlifting? <laughs> can oh, I've had you, a right? couple. I've had a couple. Um, I was I was a fullback and a tight end, and so and I, I'm only, I'm only five foot eleven. I got sort of a stocky frame, so bench was always very easy for me. Just there wasn't very far for the bar to travel, I guess, compared to the lanky wide receivers and stuff. And and uh, so I had a pretty pretty high reps that I could do in the combine tests but I was doing one and I was it was when I was in first year university I was being spotted by the starting quarterback he was like an all-time record holder at the University of Western really? Ontario really wow yeah and uh I was being spotted by him and uh a part of our training our our trainer was pushing us really hard we had to do on the Monday a bench test I think I got 24 reps or something like that at 225 and you're supposed and then to we had to do it again and you're, yeah okay we had to That's do it again the on the test. Thursday. That's the that was the test. test. Yeah, and we had to do it again on the Thursday. And I thought, oh, the quarterbacks spot me here. Rep number two, I felt something go in my right side of my. I still have a golf ball of scar tissue underneath there when I Ugh. play around with it, and yeah. maybe the size of a grape. And it popped. And I, but I still did eighteen or nineteen more reps oh. because I just, I just, I was, I was nineteen, so I was stupid. But <laughs> yes. I couldn't, uh, yeah. I couldn't allow, or I, was, I might have been twenty, but I couldn't allow myself to. Uh, to stop but the, the silly thing was is that if i had to stopped i probably would have healed faster it took me right. about a month and a half before i could bench again well but there's a good lesson there and, and and we're coming to an end of the segment but there's a really good lesson there a spotting someone when they're weightlifting there's a definitely a technique to that yeah i mean, I, I know that uh, when i'm spotting someone or someone spotting me there's that kind of moment where it if you do it just right before it starts to sink back mm -hmm. and you don't you don't want to just yank it off the guy and put it on the you want you want to help them 
just as little as you need to. Sometimes just it's just a fingertip. That's and, right. Right. And, and I think that's true in our spiritual life. We need brothers who will yes. come and spot us. And when, we're, mm-hmm. when we have a burden, it says bear one another's burden in the scriptures, right? So there's mm-hmm. a time when we need to come in and lift. But we don't need to. What, but our job when we lift um, someone by helping them or praying for them or encouraging them or giving them wisdom or just taking them aside and spending time with them isn't to totally just uh, do their job for them. But just to spot them and give that, give them that little. But isn't it amazing what a like what a little finger can do of someone just lifting a little bit with the pinky finger to help you get that rep in, right? We're talking with right. uh, Kennedy Hall. His book is called "Terror of Demons: Reclaiming Catholic Traditional Catholic Masculinity." And I, by the way, I love that word, tradition. It's something that I think Aristotle liked. I think C.S. Lewis liked. I think G.K. Chesterton liked. I think uh, I think we. Uh, we look back at the, the the way things have always been, and we can mm-hmm. learn a lot instead of throwing everything out like people want to do today, like with one of those I forget what the that ba- the game is where you pull out it's a stack of wood and you pull out a piece of wood from the bottom and put it on the top. Jenga. It, Jenga. We're taking those little pieces out and and saying, well, we're high and mighty. We're going to move it and, and put that here. We're going to move this and put that here. And pretty soon it all comes tumbling down. So we need to get back to that solid foundation. We'll be back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Dan LaBoon Markham with another episode of Country Up. Buckaroo. What brand do folks put on you? No doubt some good and some bad. Lots of terms for cowboys, cow hand, cow poke, cow puncher, ranch hand, herder, brush popper, never heard that one, did you? And buckaroo. Was a time in Arizona when cow pokes resisted being called cowboys due to the outlaw gang known as the cowboys who notoriously tussled with Wyatt Earp, his brothers, and Doc Holliday. From dime novels, the popularity of rodeos, and Hollywood producing Western movies, the term cowboy rose to the top and stuck. I do admit having a personal liking for buckaroo. It has a certain feel when you pronounce it, with a sort of wholesome tune when you get to the roo and buckaroo. Herders were multi-ethnic. Most trail drivers were veterans of the Civil War, Confederate, and Union, with somewhere in the neighborhood of 25% being freed slaves. Others were European immigrants, Mexicans, and American Indians. Christianity is indeed multi-ethnic. Bible types called by a number of names, some good and some not so good. Essentially, Christian means little anointed ones or followers of Christ. We've been called hypocrites, fundies, Bible bashers, hateful, and so on. Sometimes deserved, sometimes not. Not to worry. The key is following and imitating Christ in word and deed. Jesus said we would be known by the fruit we bear. Hopefully our fruit looks wholesome to others because, well, it it is wholesome. Keep in mind, though, our fruit will be ultimately judged by Christ alone, not others nor our culture. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Men, are you looking for something that you can lead your sons through that will help them grow in manly virtue? Our new school of manliness provides you and your sons with 36 months of audio, video, and written lessons that includes a full toolbox with all of our Long Ride Home TV series, all the video versions of the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show, Bear's Daily Catechism in a Year video podcast, Pat Gervais, the Catholic Biker Daily Rosary, and a lot more. You can lead your sons of confirmation age and above through this manly school. Go to deepadventure.com and look into Bear's new school of manliness. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak.
Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We have Kennedy Hall with us who's written a book, The Terror of Demons, Reclaiming Traditional Catholic Masculinity as our co-adventure guide. I want, I want to remind you, we've done something something so cool uh, with our website. We have Bear's Man Cave, of course, which we've had for many years, where the men, you can join, and we have a non-Facebook community site on our website. Uh, and you can become part of this community of men who challenge each other and encourage each other. And about every two weeks, we get together for a Zoom meetup. But also, we've added this incredible element to it called Bears School of Manliness. It's a three-year cycle, just like you know the church likes us to go through three-year cycles. And we and and it's all it's interesting because we got it all based on cowboy themes. My next book is called Where Have All the Cowboys Gone. And uh, the, tw- the you know rules of manliness where have all the cowboys gone? And because you know knights have been taken over by some little group called the knights of, the knights of Columbus. So what are you going to do? So we use a bear uh, a, a, a cowboy type theme, but it's something that we as the as the group of men go through. Uh, like right now we're on self mastery. We're on, it's it's month I think six of year one that we're in. We all go through it together. There's different lessons in their video and and audio homilies and co- and and segments from my TV show Long Ride Home and and all all kinds of different things that that are very engaging as well as written. Uh, uh, documents there so it's very engaging and so the men we go through it together but what's really exciting is the men are going through it with their sons like once or twice a week they go through they tap into the school of manliness, manliness either on their iPhone or app that we have or on the computer and they're and they're going and they can each of their sons have their own login so that they can track the progress of their sons they each have their own journal that they can keep so it's a pretty cool tool so check it out Go to deepadventure.com, and uh, what happens is you'll connect with me or, or, or Jason, one of our men here, and we will lead you through and let you see what it's all about because you, you just can't describe it. It's just so cool, so fun, so engaging. And that's why we love having uh, Kennedy Hall with us. He's written a book called The Terror of Demons, Reclaiming Traditional Catholic Masculinity. Hey, Ken- Kennedy, why do you even talk about Satan? He doesn't exist, really, or he's just kind of a, uh, you know what I mean? I mean, isn't he? Didn't that go away uh, back during the time of the Enlightenment? Didn't they get rid of all that stuff? Yeah, they. Uh, yeah, they just. Um, <laughs> he was. He's a personified evil force, or something like that. Um, yeah. So uh, the reason. Well, I start the book with. Um, I think it's chapter one. It's, the devil is real and wants your soul, and you know, I. Uh, I'm. I'm, a, I'm not a military man. I'm a, a sports guy, but I, I used to coach a lot, and and I would read military histories and things for strategy tips. And and if you don't account for your enemy, you're going to lose. That's just what it is, you know. Um, it, one of the biggest lies we've ever been told is that the devil isn't real, and that's exactly what he wants you to think. So yeah. you can't fight him because you don't think yeah. about him. So it's not as if you know you're living in paranoia or something like that. You don't have to believe that every bad thought you have is from Satan, but you have to recognize that that he definitely inspires a lot of them. So um, first and foremost, you're, you're, you're up the creek if you don't recognize your enemy. So it seems pretty simple to me. Yeah, you know, uh, Satan hates you and has a terrible plan for your life. You know That's what, I right. think one of the best books someone can read, and it's a heavy read, is the Screw Tape Letters. Oh, I love it. It really does like let you know the wiles of the enemy and how he, yeah. how he works. You know, my mother, there were times when I... Uh, uh, I don't know in ministry a while ago when I had a big I had a big youth group and we had um, well I actually had four members in a youth group and then the Lord just exploded into the 60 members over a short little bit of time over a few month period two month period but a lot of those new members Kennedy were musicians who had given their lives to an oversoul mm-hmm. yeah. and so demons you know when they would give their lives to the Lord demons would manifest and you you have a real direct encounter with a demon you know that they're real and the, mm-hmm. the problem is when they're living in the shadows and you're just not aware of it. Yeah, I've, um, you know, when I reverted or, you know, sort of, I was nominally Catholic growing up. And when we came back, my wife and I were married, but not practicing and, and all that. And Yeah. And when we started to practice the faith, it, uh, lots of stuff happened in our house. Like, I mean, it was, it was like parts of a horror movie with things moving around and, and noises and just crazy, crazy stuff. And then as soon as, you know, basically living in a state of grace and, and, and having sacramentals, they'd all went away, you know? Um, and I just, it was so clear to me how real it was. 
Yeah, you know, one of the things that men do uh, when they join the man cave is we encourage them to go and get holy water and go throughout their house and bless it. But the sign of the cross on every wall, every doorway, and to ask the Lord to purify it. And there's prayers, you know, that the Catholic Church has that you can do that, or or better yet, invite a Catholic Church. And we have a crucifix right over the entryway of our door. Mm-hmm. You know, when people come in or when they leave, they know they're with the cross. But but the, the, the enemy, uh, is if you're not aware that there's an enemy, I guess keep getting this image sometimes in my mind of a little kid, a little toddler walking through a war zone in Syria and not in looking down and looking around, not even aware that there's a, they're in the middle of a firefight. If, mm-hmm. you're, if you're a man and you don't know that Satan ha- is out to get you, you're living in a dream world and you're in danger. It's amazing with... Um the last, I mean, two years to, to slow the spread, <laughs> all this stuff that's happened, you know, a lot of people after about a year and a bit of just saying, why is everything so irrational? Why is everything so crazy? What's going on? Yeah. A lot of people have sort of come back to the faith or started considering Christianity because of the, the, the evil. They said, this is beyond incompetence. This is beyond, you know, someone is, 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 has, a, has it out for me. This is, this is you know coordinated and weird and like another level and yeah and uh it's interesting how the evil actually inspires people to look for god in that sense the, the diabolical it's it's very true you can see the yeah. uh how easily we gave up our freedoms it's you know, crazy. Our, our liberties and uh, and we're proud of what now this this we always do shows that are not necessarily uh topical of uh, current mm-hmm. but right there where you live in ontario canada uh we we I love what the truckers are doing. You know, I, I myself, I, I don't have, I, I'm, I'm going to say it, say it, I've been vaxxed, but I don't like people having to be forced to be. I don't like the mandates. It's, that's, that's, um, it reminds me of the, the three young men in the fiery furnace, doesn't it? When they said, mm-hmm. you better eat this. Yeah, you can't force somebody to do something against your will. You just, you know. Especially and, and against their own bodies. Right? Medical stuff. I mean, if, like I write, like I write about the stuff, you know, for a living at LifeSite and, and, uh. You can do. I mean, there's research that will support a lot of different positions. That's fine, but you just got to let people have their choices. I don't. If you want to take Advil, like I couldn't care less. You want to take Tylenol, drink Pepsi, right. drink Coke. Not right. my business. It's none yeah. of your business. It's none of your business. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. But we've seen you. You can sense there's a sort of diabol. There is definitely uh, a diabol diabolical. There's a spiritual attack. Mm-hmm. More and more, uh, those people who who uh, don't believe in God or think of him as a deist or someone they can put on the mm-hmm. shelf. Uh, and twist and change him, you know, to whatever they want. You know, Jesus didn't say, uh, you're the, you know, the, there's a scripture that says, you are the clay, I am the potter. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm the one who's forming you, and uh, let's get that straight. I'm not that Jesus Christ is going to go over to Starbucks and have a poetry reading <laughs> about wokeness, you know, or why we can't all get along, you know. He's a tough guy. He's the biggest, baddest bouncer there is. You can't go to heaven except through him, right? You can't go to the Father except for by Jesus. So you're saying the first thing is is we need to deal with the reality that we have an enemy. That's right. You have to. Otherwise, you can't fight him because you won't know he's there. How do you you, uh, propose that men build a strong fortress for their family then spiritually? Sure. Uh, First thing, uh, you know, being that I am Canadian, I, I, uh, I knew about Jordan Peterson before it was cool. You know, he was on local television. Oh, he's one of those Canadian Whovians, isn't he? He is, yeah. He's uh, awesome. He's got a lot of University of Toronto. And yeah. so he was on, uh, like, uh, not PBS, but something like that for the province of Ontario multiple times. I had seen him and uh, interesting lectures and things. And uh, so when he got real famous, it was like, oh, this guy, this guy's getting famous. This is cool. He's smart. But he always has that phrase, um, you know, clean up your room first. Clean up your own room. Yeah, yeah. And that's uh, that's just good advice for the spiritual life. Um, you know, there's an aspect where you're like priest, priest over your household. Obviously, in a sense, you're not a, 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 sac- a sacramental priest, but you're but you're a priest in a sense of leadership and spiritual headship of your household. And if you are not living in a state of grace, or at least doing your very best to do so, um, and you're not, you know, I mean, think about it. You lock your doors at night if you live in a, I mean, maybe you live in a place where you don't have to. That's that's even better. But m- theoretically, you lock your doors. Maybe you have a, a firearm. Uh, maybe you got a dog. You have these things in place because you go, hey, it might not happen, but I would like to be able to protect my family if the situation arises. If you're going to do that on the natural level, you have to do it on the on the supernatural level, yeah. on the preternatural level. So the first thing is you have to get in a state of grace, which means going to confession whenever you commit mortal sin and then try not to commit mortal sins. And uh, just like, you know, uh, more analogies, if you were trying to be a soldier or something, you have to remain in shape. 
You can't just do basic training once and then never go for a run again. You've got to continue to pray the rosary. You've got to read scripture. You've got to say your prayers, have a prayer life, morning, evening prayers, that sort of thing. And once you've sorted your own self out, you'll usually see a lot of stuff actually sorting itself in your own house. Um, but then you're also in a position where if you're talking to your wife and your kids, if let's say you're making a change, they'll actually listen to you because they'll say, well, I've noticed a change in you, dad, you know, like you're a better guy now and, mm. and um, you're taking this seriously. You're in, they won't maybe say this out loud, but they'll implicitly understand it. And it makes everything better versus, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's the opposite, for example, of these woke politicians who are Puritans and their morals and have immoral lives and nobody wants to listen to them. You know, well, they've you tried to build, like they've that. tried to build a, uh, uh, build using some Christian principles, but not having God in their lives. We're talking yep. with Kennedy Hall. He's the author of this new book, Terror of Demons Reclaiming Traditional Catholic Masculinity. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I got to remind everybody, too, that my, my book, uh, Sophie Institute, just republished my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtues. It has some updates in it. So you can go to our website, deepadventure.com or Sophia or Amazon. Uh, it's a great it's 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 designed to have short passages, short chapters so that it's something that can be read at the dinner table or in your men's group. You know, um, men and women both love the book. So Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. I invite you to check it out. We're talking with Kennedy Hall. He has written this this new book, Terror of Demons, Reclaiming Traditional Catholic Masculinity. You know, Kennedy, I was just up in Erie, Pennsylvania, and right towards the end, this gentleman, Felix, came up and and kind of from the side and from the back, trying to get in, trying to trying to get my attention when I was signing books. And so I got to, to have a private moment with him, and he said, you know, uh, he was a he. I, his, his website had something about roofing in it. He said I, he was a roofer. And I shook his hands, and his hands were just tough. Yeah. You know, I said, I kept, you know, and I looked at his hands, and I go, so those are the hands of St. Joseph and Jesus. You know, because Jesus was a tecton. He probably worked mm -hmm. with rock. Have you ever been to Israel? There's only one house that's made out of wood. That's the prime minister's house. Jesus and Joseph, tough men. And believe me, they, they are the terror of demons. But when yeah, we're the, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Go. I was just yeah. going to say, yeah, the, we're, the, we're, you're right with the word tecton. The word carpenter, it may as well say contractor, tradesman. It's just sort of overall right. overall builder of things. And uh, it is astonishing to think, um, you know, there's 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 in, a, in my book, there's an appendix of, um, I had gone on a retreat and there was a beautiful image of St. Joseph and the Holy Family in the chapel. And um, it just was very inspiring. And then I b immediately went home and was writing for this place called the Fatima Center at that time. And so I asked if I could write a weekly sort of column on St. Joseph. Mm. And um, it really struck me just how, you know, St. Joseph would have been essentially teaching Christ how to use a hammer and nails. Right. And how to carry planks of wood and, and move stones and things. And it's just, it's all culminates in the crucifixion and the resurrection, you know? Yeah, well, he, well, he stood there beside me. I kept showing people, look at his hands. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus' hands look, look like. That's what St. Joseph's hands look like. The other, the other thing is that, you know, when we're, when we're filming Long Ride Home especially, when we're out filming that motorcycle TV show, people say, do you ever come under, under a spiritual attack? And I tell them, no, never have. Uh, actually, because we're on the attack. And all we're doing is experiencing resistance. You know, the, Jesus mm -hmm. said the, uh, uh, that the gates of hell will not prevail against, uh, what is the word? I'm missing the word. You know, it's just the gates of hell will not prevail. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and yeah. prevail against us. And so, and so, we gates don't attack people. We right. need to be on, we need to be on the offensive. And one of the things, one of the biggest things, think I sins I think that men have today is the sin of omission. It's not what it's not just what they do. It's what they're not doing that they need to do. That's why we're in the mess we're in. You know, I was talking to. Um, He's a lawyer, an American lawyer. He's a, he's a Catholic gentleman. I, I do some business with him, and and uh, he calls me every few days to just chat for 30, 30 to forty minutes. And and I, I think he's in his sixties, and he you know he's about thirty years older than me. But he just said, you know, Kennedy, I hate what's happened to my country and and your country, and and you know, like I love you know patriotism is a virtue. I I love this. I'm looking out my window, and it's all covered in snow and ice, and. I love this place. You know, I, I, I would like to think that if I had to, I would die for it in, in the proper sense. And, and, and I hate what's happened to it. And the reason why we're here is because um, men have just decided to not stand up. And it's not just when the whole lockdown stuff started. It's everything. It's, it's been happening for a while. How many little steps were put in the way and, and, and how many things on the route to getting here. And, 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 and it's the result of inaction, like you say. Yeah, and you talk about the effeminate man. Mm-hmm. Um, Talk, talk story about what you mean by that. Sure. So, um, so I was teaching in a uh, publicly funded Catholic school system. So basically, public schools with crosses on the wall. So you know, yeah, woke and all that kind of stuff, unions and that sort of thing. And um, when I released the book, it was May first. I had released it self published first, and then I did it through Tan again. Now, when I had done it self publishing, it was May first, twenty twenty, Saint Joseph the Worker Feast Day, and. Um, and the word effeminacy apparently to people means homosexuality. Now, any man could be effeminate. It means a reluctance to suffer due to an attachment to pleasure. But that's not wait, actually wait, wait. What the word. Wait, wait, wait. Say that again. The definition? Yeah, it's so powerful. Reluctance to suffer due to an attachment to pleasure. Aquinas. So that's Aquinas. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's there's a hard thing that you have to do to do and the right t- thing, and you just won't yeah. do it. Yeah. And um, and actually, the word effeminate. Um, has roots in words that talk about like the softness of something. So if something's rotting from the inside, like a door, Thomas Aquinas mm-hmm. says it's like a door that yields easily to blows. So it's rotting wood. So if, if you're effeminate, you are rotting in virtue, in the sense of virtue. You don't have the fortitude to do what you have to do. Um, so uh, basically, uh, it's not that everything in our life has to be hard. It's okay to relax. It's okay to have proper leisure, that sort of thing. Um, but life is full of hard things they could be everything from you know my wife is pregnant thanks be to god respecting our fifth child and she gets very nauseous getting up early in the morning and in the middle of the night is just hard for her so you know i change 90 percent of the diapers it is what it is especially the stinky ones you know yeah and right. um <laughs> it does it's not fun to get up at two in the morning but it's not hard it's not really that hard you know right and so you just have to do it or um you know lent is coming up the church doesn't say we have to do the fasting that the way we used to, and probably most of us couldn't, but we can do more than they, than the church asks yeah. of us and it'll be hard and we'll have to suffer a little bit and re- you know, not be attached to pleasure. It's everything of virtue and spiritual life is attached to that vice essentially. Well, let's go down this dangerous path. Sure. Looking back to when I, when I was young, uh, Humane Vitae mm-hmm. uh, spoke out against the pill and, 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 um, and contraception. But I remember when I was young, for someone to have a child outside of wedlock was just unheard of. And, uh, and then you have uh, um, this, uh, I guess it was the free love, the summer of love. You know, I was, I was, I think, a senior in high school or junior in high school. And it was like sex, drugs, and rock and roll instead of wine, women, and song. And uh, we saw this kind of women used to have this agreement with each other that we're not going to have sex with men outside of marriage. Um, mm-hmm. And that that came crumbling down, and so now for a woman to hold her ground uh, and be to be chased means she's going to be relegated, may not have that many opportunities, or that many options to find a good man. But a good man, of course, is a man that would wait. And so you mm-hmm. see what you see this this kind of Pope John Paul wrote about love and responsibility. All of a sudden, you could have sex without being responsible. You know, mm-hmm. if the if if the there a, a conception did happen, well, just abort abort the child, yeah. and you see. So men are meant men, I think, are meant to carry responsibility, and when that mm-hmm. burden was taken off our shoulder, we became effeminate. When the, we, there's a lot of moments we could point to, but the most watershed, I agree with you, is probably the pill. Um, 
Yes. The, the, the most natural human function that men and women do together is obviously procreation. It's right there in the first you know, three chapters of Genesis. Well and there's a reason for that. It's, it's right there. It's primordial. So you, know, you, you are reversing the order of creation. You are, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I wrote a piece about this. You're reversing this the order of, of creation. creation. Powerful yeah. statement. I wrote a piece about this where I was trying to, I was trying to, I think I said it on the radio or something, I don't know, write so many things, I forget what they are. But I was trying to explain that um, ever since we've had contraception, we have de facto had a child of, a, a society of child sacrifice. And that's why we have lockdowns. And that's why we have things that harm children. Because. Right. Well said. Because the whole mentality that we have is children will fit into my plan. Not I will fit myself into God's plan. You know, you think about that. All the, the yeah, the, the abortion is the, 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 the liberals are so into mm -hmm. abortion. And yet, oh, we need to protect these children and cover them with masks. All they want them to do is that's submit. Right. That's right. It's even, but it's even more before that. It's contraception because you can be like a pro-life Protestant conservative politician, but you're still into contraception, and it still is a disordered mentality because right. Because what you're saying is like you you already have a mentality that children ultimately come second to my thriving, right? Even if you don't say it out loud. Wow. So when it comes time to say, as a teacher, this is why I had to resign. I couldn't. I mean, I always knew there was problems. But I at least believed that even my leftist teacher friends would put the children first. And here I am in the, you know, the resource room with working with teachers who are helping these disenfranchised children. I coach these kids on the rugby field and things like that. I know they're abused when they go home. I know their stepdad is beating their mom. I know this stuff. Right. And then we're going to go on lockdown and it's too unsafe to, to go and teach them. And I said, you know, I, I thought to myself, you know, excuse my language, you bastards. Right. You know Jimmy is going home to get abused. Right. And you're not willing to risk your life for him. You have sacrificed the children. And that's right. the contraceptive mentality. Right. And and in so many ways. And so so what's happened is this whole woke culture to me mm -hmm. is is a culture of of effeminate it's uh, of, you know women um but in their weaknesses and their in the when they when they don't know how to fight properly, they will gossip and they will cancel each other, right? And that's mm -hmm. what's that's what this whole woke thing is is the effeminization of people that are in power, whether it's in media or in government or things like that. And we've mm -hmm. just let it happen. But I think we've reached a crossroads where men are beginning to stand up like your truckers are up mm -hmm. on the border that that it, no more. And you know th we talk about that uh, that special. Uh, thing by Bishop Olmsted and what the Knights of Columbus are doing, step into the breach. Well, the breach is running right through our living rooms, and we need to deal with it. Mm -hmm. We're talking with Kennedy Hall. Love this guy. Uh, you know, we have one more segment with you, but before we go, I want to ask you if you'll come back. Sure, why not? We'd love it's, to have you great. back. Yeah. Um, Kennedy Hall has written this book, Terror of Demons, Reclaiming Traditional Catholic Masculinity. And where can they find you? You know what? Best place to find me is Twitter, at Kennedy Hall. Uh, Got the address in 2009 when it was new, so I've had my, my name ever since. So at, at Kennedy, Kennedy Hall, that's where all my stuff is. And you, and you write for Life Site News. Life Site News, yeah. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua.
This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your guide, Bear Wozniak. We have with us today Kennedy Hall. This is the kind of guy I dig, I, I, I search for to have on my show. I know you guys love him. His book is Terror of Demons. I know that when uh, Father Don wrote his book on St. Joseph, that he mm -hmm. had a real struggle. Some people didn't want him to talk about Joseph being the Terror of Demons. But we need to be. Men, men need to emulate Joseph and Jesus and be the terror of of demons, we need to we need to stand strong. So we're talking about the effeminization of of culture. What can men do to to uh, to uh, step into the fray? Sure. Um, the first thing is it starts in um, every challenge you personally face. So, mm. um, like, uh, I don't want I don't I don't mean to get too political or anything, but this is just an analogy I'm going to give. Okay. So we've had mask mandates, obviously, like a lot of places have. Okay, and don't worry, YouTube. I'm not talking about the effectiveness. I'm just talking about the civil rights aspect. <laughs> and um, you know, I realized when this stuff was happening, I said, "Okay, this is going too far. We have to resist." Not everyone's going to. That's fine, but you know, I would have friends saying, "Well, I can't. You know, I don't want to make my my friends uncomfortable." And I said, "Listen, you can go to the store. I don't own one. I live in Canada. We call it, you know, COVID stand, and uh, I don't own I don't own one." And I've never worn one in a store. And um, I just walk in, I smile, and some no one says anything because people are not really going to do that. And uh, people would say, well, I'm saving myself for the big fight. And I said, you got to be mm. careful with that because oh my this, is the, this is the little fight. And, and you're saying, you're, you're, this is the little fight. And again, I get why people have to wear them for work and things. This isn't a judgment of you know, flying. I get it. But I'm just saying where you can fight it and you're choosing not to, then you won't be in shape for the big fight. And that right. happens in our life. That happens in our life. It's like, you know, I used to, you know, I had friends that I played football with. Well, I'll stop messing around with my girlfriend when we get married. No, uh, you won't. <laughs> no, you won't, right. Because <laughs> now you have the habit of doing it. You have to right. stop it now. Right. So the first thing in order to, 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 let's say, step into the breach and be the man who can stop the tide is... Um, you cannot let the little things go as far as the challenges and you have to face them. It is true. You know, there's a scripture verse, I believe it's in Song of Solomon. It's the little foxes that spoil the vineyard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's those little things. And uh, uh, virtue, uh, prudence, is pursuing the true good in every situation. Mm -hmm. And it's the small decisions that you make, especially the, the where your thoughts are going to be, bringing all thoughts into captivity, as, as the scripture says. It's every little decision. And I see people that have made bad decisions and they find themselves in a corner. And I just tell them, I'm, there's no one who's going to help you out of this except for yourself. But you, need to, you can work your way out of that by uh, incremental. Every decision that comes your way, make the good decision. And the thing is, is you know, like we talked about the effeminization of the culture. People, I've been introduced so many times to people, this is Bear Wozniak. He's that nice guy I told you about. And I tell them, no, I'm not nice. I know so many nice Christian men wouldn't hurt a flea. Mm -hmm. We need we don't need nice guys. We need good men, and good is a powerful word because only God is good. And so to mm -hmm. seek to to seek and understand the good, the true good, and then to decide that's the true good, and then to decide I will act on that is what is that incremental fight. And you can't give up. You can't give up an inch here of ground. That's what we've done for the last fifty years. Yeah, we've and it's it's everywhere. And the thing is, you know, we get in a, what looks like an insurmountable position. You know, it's like you realize, oh, the schools are bad, the healthcare system, the whatever, the everything, you know, the everything. And you're like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Well, you can't do it all at once. Right. I, you, obviously, you can't. So you just have to start with the little things and the things that you can control. And you have to be prepared to make sacrifices on the home front. Um, and it's it's not easy. Like it's hard. You know, I I yeah. work at home. I loved my job as a teacher. 
when I, I didn't t- say this earlier, but when I put out the book, I basically, I didn't get canceled in the official sense. It's, it's pretty much impossible to fire a teacher in Ontario because of union stuff. You, I think if you committed a crime, you could still say that I was stressed and they probably put you in rehab for 28 days or something. You wouldn't get fired. It's almost impossible. Um, but there was petitions and stuff to get me fired, you know, like going around the city Facebook and 30,000 people clicking on them and stuff. And, Tell us about that. <laughs> well, um, I was, I came out against the lockdowns, uh, Funny enough, I was on. I was doing the Exodus ninety. That, that oh, yeah. fasting awesome. thing, right? And I was doing that. I think that was the second time. It was the second time I was doing it. And I was doing that, so I wasn't reading the internet. I didn't know what a coronavirus was because I wasn't reading the news. It was wonderful. It was a blissful time in my life. And um, so I got a message saying my dad texted me and said, "Congratulations, you're going to have a three week holiday, a two weeks after March break." And I said, "Why?" And he said, "Oh, it's this whole coronavirus thing." So I looked it up for some reason. The first website I went to was a journalist that I trusted, and he basically sort of debunked the hype. He said, well, this is, you know, it ripped through the nursing homes, that sort of thing, but this is not the bubonic plague. Everyone kind of calmed down. And I went, okay, well, I'm 33 years old. Uh, at the time, I was shape. 31, I guess, yeah. and, um, or 32. 33 years old, I'm in good health, thanks be to God. I'm, I'm not going to freak out. And uh, so I thought everybody was reasonable. So I started saying this publicly, <laughs> and everybody was not reasonable. And... Um, and then I put the book out, people, and it was on Twitter and stuff. And so there was uh, there was investigations in my school board and, and all this kind of stuff. And, and I had to answer all these tribunals and things. They brought in a theologian. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. You didn't have to answer anything. You could have just said, you know, you're right, you're right. Oh, yeah. Well, I, right. This is, the, this is the difference. Yeah. You you stood you stood your ground. Yeah. I did. It made me sick. Like, I actually... Um, in July of 2020, I uh, had this mysterious illness. No, it wasn't coronavirus. It was like a stomach thing. I realized after it was stress. Like I was in bed for right. three or four days shaking and I couldn't eat. And yeah. and it was the weight of all the stress because um, I'm the sole provider and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. With five but I children. knew I couldn't right. bend the knee. I can't. You can't bend the right. knee. Right. Right. So and God rewards. It was very, very, very hard. Um, right. And I was worried. Pension. Uh, benefits. You know, I, like teaching in Ontario is, is like $100,000. Well, you're banned dollars for life now too, right? I mean, that's it. I, well, I, I didn't get my license taken away. But I they mean, no one's going to hire you. No, probably not. But I, yeah. I mean, the system, like it's, it's, it's completely communist. I couldn't work in there anyway anymore. But, um, but God provided with other employment. The book sold a ton and got picked up by 10. And it was, it was very clear that, you know, like nobody makes, it's very hard to make money on books. And I've written another book, uh, imitation of the Screw Tape Letters, actually called "Family Be Damned." It's being re-released as "Lockdown with the Devil." Awesome. And thank awesome. you. And um, and uh, but that one nowhere near the Terror of Demons. But it's because you know this was the one I sacrificed everything for, and God yeah. said you sacrificed everything. So here is what you need to keep going. Amen. You know, when I was traveling just now up up to Erie in ministry, uh, you face so it's just. <laughs> When you say yes to the Lord, get ready because mm-hmm. um, yeah. there's so the harvest is so great right now. So many men are so ready to hear the, the truth. That's right. And how do you even spend enough time? Put enough time in your day. And one of my biggest sins, actually, probably would say my main sin, is thinking that it's up to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, and not saying, "Okay, Lord, I'm just going to do hour by hour, be faithful. You take care of the rest." There's that an old song: "Do your best, pray that it's blessed. God will take care of the rest." We've had, um, I call it vaccine apartheid because I don't, it's like in the yes. book I call, yes. in the book I call, um, I call the, I call it pornography evil images because I'm like, let's just call it what it is. You know, let's, 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 let's call it out for what it exactly is. And so I say it's vaccine segregation or medical apartheid. Or yes. Whatever. And uh, I live in a tiny village near Lake Huron, less mm-hmm. than a thousand people. There is a ice rink, an indoor rink. I don't know. I could walk there in 78 seconds. And I can't go in there. I play hockey in a chicken barn with my buddies where they flood they flooded their old chicken barn. You can and, go in there. You can't go in there because of the mask. No, because of the vaccine mandate. Yeah, that's what I mean. So you've been, you've yeah. been, you've been segregated. Yeah. Exactly. Now it's lifting in, uh, thir- as we record this, like 13 aren't, days. Thanks aren't, to they ni- aren't they nice? There's, well, you know, they say it's There's nothing so- to do with the truckers. It's just the tens of thousands of people every weekend in Ottawa screaming to, 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 to take the right. whole thing down. But uh, it's because so the science it's is science. evolving. It's the science. Their the science. political science. The political science. The politi- yeah, it's the, whatever the local poll is, it's that science. Well, and the whole time, you know, people say, look, come on, just, you know, 
do this and you can just, you know, basically, so you're, you're being segregated. You have every reason. It's like, listen, again, people make their choices. I couldn't care less people do. But the reasoning behind it has to be pure. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm really glad that I didn't give in just for matters of conscience of because, because now it's lifting. Right. I can, I mean, imagine if I made a decision three weeks ago. Uh, fine, it's tough. I want my kids to play hockey. It's not fair on them. Yeah. And then three weeks later, I know people like that. They right. cracked finally. And then it right. lifts a month later and they go, right. I feel so stupid. Well, you know, yeah. you, you go back to uh, we, the, the Aryan heresy and mm-hmm. uh, those that, that uh, gave into that and, and, uh, and, and, and at the last minute. So many times when you, we've come under persecution, uh, right. we crack. But, and God will forgive us for that, but we want to, this is our wake-up call. I, I saw a woman the other day saying, I'm not woke, but I'm awake. There you, you know, go. This, woke, this, this, this awakened us. Uh, you know what? We ran out of time, and that's exactly why I yeah. want to have you back. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Where can they find you again, Kennedy Hall? So I write a life site news full time, and uh, you can go to at Kennedy Hall on Twitter and see all my stuff there. Yeah, and get the kind, as we say in Hawaii, Terror of Demons, reclaiming traditional yes. Catholic masculinity. masculinity. Tanbooks.org. <laughs> and what is it? Tanbooks.org Tan or on books. Amazon. Yeah, yeah. I love tan books too. So until next time, this is Bear Wozniak. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.